So now we will see an application of uh, the above result. So let g be equal to g l n r, right? Then g is a group and has a topology. Right. So we claim that g is a topological group. So let's check that. So we need to show that g l n r cross g l n r. To GLNR, the multiplication map is continuous. Right. So now note that this has the product topology. Right. So in particular, we know that the projection maps are continuous. So we can look at the projection maps GLNR. This is some PI, right? And Let's say on GLNR we have these continuous maps which project onto the coordinates. So let's call this QIJs, right? So given a matrix A, this map QIJ it sends it to AIJ. Right? Yeah. So uh, this implies that the composite of these two is continuous, right? So therefore we get that from GLNR cross GLNR to R. So A comma B maps to Aij or similarly Bij, these are continuous, right? And this multiplication map M, the coordinates of M, are polynomials in the functions Aij and Bij, right? And we have seen that if we take a collection of continuous maps and we form any polynomial using those uh, continuous maps. So like, yeah. So then the resulting map function is continuous, right? So this implies that M is continuous. Right? So similarly, let's take GLNR. Let's look at the inverse map. This A goes to A inverse, right? right? So we know the inverse is given by this formula 1 upon determinant of A into a joint of A transpose, right? Yeah. So now, uh, once again, the determinant does not vanish on GLNR. So 1 upon determinant is a continuous uh, function. And this a joint of A transpose, this is also each of the coordinates is uh, a continuous function in the coordinates of this GLNR, therefore the product is a continuous function, right? The inverse is continuous, right? So this implies that GLNR is a topological group. Right? Now let P be this parabolic subgroup. So here we have a R cross R matrix, here we have 0, and these can be anything, right? So we are looking at all P contained in G, G is equal to GLNR, right? Be this subgroup. So all elements in G cross in G which look like this, right? So clearly P is a closed subgroup. Right? It is given by as the inverse image of the projection onto this this piece, projection of zero on the inverse image of zero under the projection onto this piece. Okay, so therefore P is a closed subgroup. So this implies that. Uh, so this thus the previous discussion. Shows that. G mod P is a host of topological space. Okay, so now we want to identify G mod T. We want to ident we want to give a nice description of the points of G mod P, which is what we are going to do next. So for that, consider the map.
from G is 5 to R dimensional subspaces of Rn. Right. So, let us call this set uh, script G. Okay. So, here what is the map? So, let us take a matrix A and let us write A as V1. The Vi's are the columns of A up to Vn. Right. So, since A is in GLNR, so G is GLNR, this implies that the column vectors of A are linearly independent. So, we just send it to the span of V1 up to Vr. Right. Now, we claim that phi of A is equal to phi of B if and only if uh, there exists P in P such that, okay, so let me just write T, a matrix T in our parabolic subgroup such that B is equal to A times T. So, let us see this. So, if there is we take two matrices A and B, so that B is equal to A times T, right. So, then uh, then clearly phi of A is equal to phi of B, right. Because as we if we take B equal to write as W1, W2 up to Wn, right. So, this is equal to b1, b2 up to bn times this parabolic subgroup, this r cross r 0 and here we can have anything, right. So, this will show that uh, this is a times t, right. So, this will imply that the w1 up to wr are linear combinations of V1 up to Vr, right. And both are R dimensional subspaces, right. Uh, so, this implies that the span W1 up to Wr is equal to V1 up to Vr, right. So, this shows that phi of A is equal to phi of B. Next, let us assume that phi of A is equal to phi of B and then show that, uh, right. So, if phi of A is equal to phi of B, so, then we have that the span of W1 up to WR is equal to the span of V1 up to Vr, right. Now, uh, since, since the W1 up to Wn, they span Rn and V1 up to Vn also span Rn, right. Uh, since Wi's and Vi's are a basis for Rn. This implies that uh, there exists a unique T. We have a unique matrix T in GLNR, which can be obtained as follows. So, what we do is uh, we write each Wi. So, W1, W2, Wn. We can write it as a unique linear combination of the vectors v1 up to vn, right. So, uh, if I write w1 as lambda 1 v1 plus lambda 2 v2 plus lambda n v n, right. So, then the first column of t will be lambda 1 up to lambda n, okay. And uh, this matrix t clearly has to be in G L and R because uh, we can do the same, we can replace the roles of w and v and the composition the resulting matrix T prime that we get that is going to compose with T to give identity, right. Uh, right. So, the ith column, the ith column of T is the unique way to express W i has a linear combination 
of the VJs. Okay. Okay. So we just have to show that T is in T. So note that since WI we are given this information, right? That implies that is in the span of V1 through Vr, right? So this implies that the ith column of T is going to look like so this is R, right? And then everything will be zero. So, and this happens for i lying between 1 and r, right. So, this clearly implies that t belongs to t, right. So, clearly, so this is, so this proves this claim, uh, we have proved this claim. So, let us call this 1. Next, the second point we want to show is clearly phi is surjective. So as so phi is this map from GL a matrix A, it goes to the span of the first R column vectors, right? Now given any R dimensional subspace of R n, we can choose a basis for that R dimensional subspace and V1 up to Vr, and we can extend it to a basis of R n and correspondingly we can get a matrix A, right? As any basis V1 up to Vr for an R dimensional subspace can be extended to a basis V1 up to Vn for Rn, right? So, which implies we can take the matrix A to be V1, V2 up to Vn, okay? So, this shows that phi is subjective. So, this implies that. So, when we put together 1 and 2, one can easily check that we have this map phi to script g, right? And this factors through g mod p, and this map is a bijection. Let us call this phi naught. This easily follows from 1 and 2, right? That phi naught is a bijection. Uh, so, thus the points of G mod P are in bijection with R dimensional subspaces of R n, right. So, which means, so using this bijection, we can give this space of R, R dimensional subspace of Rn, this set G, we can give G a topology. Right. So, we identify G, we identify G with G mod P using this phi naught and a subset of G is open if and only if its inverse image under phi naught is open. So clearly, so G mod P is a topology and this bijection, using this bijection, we can transfer the topology, okay. So this topological space is called the Grassmannian of R dimensional planes in Rn and it is denoted Grassmannian R comma n, right. Uh, so, by the proposition we proved we proved we know that G mod P is Hausdorff, yeah, we get that. Rasmanian R comma N is Hausdorff, right? And further, 
note that uh, also so note that gln r plus surjects on to uh, this Grassmannian r comma n right because why is that so given given an r dimensional subspace right so given an r dimensional subspace we chose a basis v1 through vr for the subspace and we extend it to a basis so we get this matrix a so if the determinant of a is negative then we just take the last column and put a minus sign take instead of vn we just take minus vn right that's one right and we we had seen right as gln r plus is path connected this implies that this grassmannian is path connected right and similarly uh, the gram schmidt uh, orthogonalization process implies that O n the orthogonal matrix surjects onto this Grassmannian or comma n, right? So why is this? So we have O n this sitting inside G L n R, right? And here we have this map phi to this. So we claim that this composition is surjective. So why is that? If we take any r-dimensional subspace, so first, so we can we can choose a basis v one up to vr then applying the gram schmidt orthogonalization process we can get an orthogonal basis orthonormal basis for this and then we can extend get orthonormal basis for the subspace and then we can extend this to an okay so let me just write that yeah and extend this extend to an orthonormal basis for Rn, right. So, we get W1 up to Wn, right. So, then the matrix A we need to take here is this W1, W2 to Wn, right. Since the Wi's are orthonormal, we will get that A transpose A is equal to identity right which will imply that a is in o n right and now so this g is actually equal to g mod p right now as o n is compact right since it's a closed and bounded subspace of r n square so this implies that and o n surjects onto g mod p this implies that uh, g mod p being the image of a compact space, it is compact, right. So, thus we have proved that the Grassmannians is host of path connected. and compact yeah uh, so we can also construct we can also do a similar construction for complex cross mines So there we will take our dimensional complex subspaces of Cn, okay, and in the same way we can show that this is host of 
in a similar way path connected and compact. Okay. And before I end, let me just mention that when r is equal to 1, the spaces Rasmanian 1 comma n are also known as projective spaces and denoted P n r or or P n c. So, if we take complex projective spaces, yeah, so depending on the underlying field, if we take, we can do this entire construction for the real numbers or for complex numbers. So, if we are, yeah, so the, this is the real projective space and this is complex space. So, we will end this lecture here.